Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Reese with Southeast Veterinary Neurology and today I want to dive into a topic that's probably on the minds of a lot of pet parents out there, idiopathic epilepsy. But you can't talk about epilepsy without first talking about basic definitions. Seizures happen when there's an unusual surge of electrical activity in the brain. During an episode, your pet may lose consciousness, stiffen up, collapse, twitch, paddle its legs, and even urinate or defecate. A seizure can last a few seconds to a few minutes and can be distressing to both you and your pet. Patients that have two or more seizures have epilepsy. When it comes to understanding why seizures happen, there are generally three main categories for underlying causes. The first cause is extracranial, or what we call reactive epilepsy. These seizures are the result from problems outside of the brain and the brain is secondarily affected. The body functions as a whole. If things become dysfunctional, then the whole body, including the brain, can become dysfunctional. Things like low blood sugar, electrolyte imbalances, kidney or liver disease, and toxin exposure fall into this category. The second category includes intracranial causes, or called secondary epilepsy. These seizures are then secondary to a problem within the brain or a symptom of a problem within the brain. These originate inside the brain, such as infections, autoimmune disease, tumors, strokes, malformations, and trauma. And that brings us to the third category, which is called idiopathic or primary epilepsy. Idiopathic epilepsy is characterized by recurrent seizures with no identifiable cause. It is the most common seizure disorder and one of the most common neurologic conditions we see in dogs. Primary epilepsy is much less common in cats where seizures have a higher tendency to be secondary to a problem within the brain. In dogs, epilepsy has been linked to genetics in some breeds. The age of onset for the seizures was for a long time placed between one and five years of age, though the updated range is now six months to six years. Primary epilepsy is generally associated with generalized seizures, which are called tonic-clonic or grand mal. These are typical seizures we see and usually follow a consistent pattern. Between seizures, primary epileptic dogs should act normal and have a normal neurologic examination. Even with these telltale signs, consulting a veterinary neurologist is important because proper treatment starts with an accurate diagnosis. Diagnosing idiopathic epilepsy is a process of elimination. The best way to try to definitively diagnose primary epilepsy is to rule out other disorders that can look like seizures. This can include vestibular events, syncopal events, and sometimes even pain. It starts with gathering detailed information. When do the seizures happen? How long do they last? What was your dog doing before, during, and after the episode? This helps us paint a more clear picture most seizures happen at nighttime while dogs are at rest. They should be unresponsive during a seizure. There can be salivation, urination, defecation, or a combination of all three. There should be a recovery period after a seizure where the dog is abnormal. This is referred to as the postictal period. They can be temporarily blind, hungry, thirsty, attention-seeking, have a compulsion to walk, have incoordination, and have a myriad of other things. Then we perform both physical and neurologic exams to look for neurologic deficits or weakness that would be suggestive of an issue within the brain. Blood work, urinalysis, and x-rays of the chest and abdomen will help us rule out causes outside of the brain such as metabolic disorders and evidence of metastatic cancerous processes. Most primary brain tumors are benign, so they will stay localized to the brain and not be something we can pick up on basic screening tests like blood work and x-rays. If the results do not show an obvious cause for a seizure disorder, then we may recommend an MRI to evaluate the structure of the brain. Depending on the results of the MRI, a cerebrospinal fluid tap for analysis may also be recommended to look for inflammation that would be associated with meningitis. MRI is very sensitive, but we can miss a small number of patients with meningitis on MRI alone. Spinal fluid is sensitive for finding inflammation, but is not specific for why the inflammation is there. Even brain tumors can cause a mild to moderate degree of inflammation. Once diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy, we will be able to develop an appropriate treatment plan. Anticonvulsant medications are a cornerstone of treatment aimed at reducing how often seizures happen, how severe they are, and how long they last. There are many options and your neurologist will be able to help you find the best fit for your dog. 
Epilepsy tends to be a naturally progressive disorder, so the goal is to try to slow down the progression by keeping the seizures spread out as best we can. The term associated with this is kindling, where an area of the brain is injured during a seizure and that area then starts to generate seizures. You are then going from one area of the brain causing seizures to two, so it's progressive over time. Treatment of seizures is not always a simple process. About a one-third of the dogs that have seizures have medically refractory epilepsy, meaning they are not well controlled on one, two, or more medications. Managing seizures in these cases can be to a degree trial and error to find which medication offers the best help with the least amount of side effects. The goal for managing seizures is to try to find a balance between the seizure control and the cost, side effects, and time commitment associated with the medications. While there is plenty of anecdotal evidence supporting homeopathic seizure remedies such as diet, acupuncture, supplements, and CBD, there is unfortunately not a lot of clinical research to support their efficacy. Dogs with idiopathic epilepsy can live long and happy lives, but it's important to understand that managing the condition is almost always a lifelong commitment. You won't need to call your vet every time your dog has a seizure, but if your dog is having one for the first time or the seizures are becoming more frequent, then it is a good idea to reach out. Emergency situations including seizures lasting more than three to five minutes, more than two seizures in a 24-hour period, or any suspicion that your dog has been exposed to toxins. In these cases, getting help quickly is critical. At Southeast Veterinary Neurology, our board-certified team of experts is here to help you navigate idiopathic epilepsy so that you and your best friend can live long and happy lives together. <laughs>